does migration harm developing countries? It's the wrong question. <laughs> um, some migration benefits poor countries, but if you have too much migration, uh, it starts to harm them, um, at least at the margin. And so there's a right level of migration. And that it's the same point in developed countries. The right answer is how much is best. On poor societies, some migration is better than none, but by the time you get to, say, Haiti and a lot of small poor countries, 85% yeah. of the educated young Haitians leave. That is debilitating. The society is hemorrhaging. Well, I mean, I'm from Greece. I, I'm experiencing it at the moment. The, yeah. the drain of skills and, and bright, creative people from Greece to, yeah. so, um, so, to mainly EU countries is tremendous at the time when actually we need people like that there the most. But at the same time, I find that it's, a, it's albeit an elegant but binary way to define very complicated personal realities. And when you start to, to do that, when you start to reduce people to numbers, I find that there's a problem. There is a, a problem generically because you're focusing on people's differences rather than on the things they share. And that is never a very good road to go down. I wouldn't accept that accusation one bit. I think it's not. Uh, Exodus I, has been described as a very humane book. I put myself oh, into I, that because I think, of my own experience, oh yes, I think my own family's experience. I don't disagree with that, but it's still adding a really elegant brick to a wall that's already too tall and quite unnecessary, in my view. I think so, the, and so you, it can be a, an incredibly humane way of looking at it but you're still looking at people on the basis of really quite arbitrary differences. That's my objection, that it's trying to reduce a, a really complicated situation into a black and white... I'm not trying to reduce at all, um, but I am trying to add um, some, something analytic yeah. to a debate which is horribly emotional and polarized. Yeah. And by giving people building blocks. I don't come up with answers on how much migration is best. Exodus doesn't tell you what to think on migration, but it does tell you how to think. It gives you the analytic building blocks that you can combine with your personal experience. My own family is the ultimate yeah. in a transnational yes, I, family. Yes, I, I read right? the, that. Uh, my, myself, my wife, and my son, when we turn up at a border, we got three different passports, right? <laughs> yes. um, so, um, uh, do I live uh, internationalism? Of course I do. All my work is on Africa. Right? Um, but the reality is we've got this brutal, polarized debate with insults from both sides. Mm. And we've got to move that from ill-informed insults to a range of disagreement around a common set of analytic concepts and then gradually accumulate evidence so that the range of disagreement is within... I would agree with that entirely. I don't have a word to say against that. Part of my issue is that I think to try and make an intellectual debate out of a of an issue that is actually emotional. The debate is not emotional because people are illogical. The debate is emotional because it is an emotional issue. I've been living here for 23 years. I like to think of myself as a good person. I work, I contribute, you know, I help old ladies with their shopping. When I get up every morning and I hear in the news in some permutation that I am undesirable, it is an emotional issue. And, and when someone turns around and says, oh, well, it's not personal, you know, we have to look at the data, that makes it more, not less emotional. I think we have to accept that there are people's lives involved in this. I'm hoping that I can help release the debate about migration from this trap. Hmm. You know, Wittgenstein had this wonderful image of the, the fly buzzing in the fly bottle. And that's where the debate on migration is. Let's open the stopper on the bottle and get some sense 